We've had some strange twists in the Donate Life Month, as it turns out. We got word this week that Hackensack University Medical Center is suspending its kidney transplant program because of a higher than average death rate. And today we learned on top of that that the federal government had found 28 deficiencies in that program. And joining us now is New Jersey's Commissioner of Health and Senior Services, Mary O'Dowd. The Commissioner, it's good of you to come on back. Were Thanks you surprised or disturbed by what you heard about Hackensack? Well, yes, and I think uh, most importantly is to know that the federal government regulates uh, transplant programs across this, the country. And in New Jersey, we became aware of the situation and worked with the federal government. We've actually inspected and been ongoing uh, visiting uh, of Hackensack's program at least 17 times. Uh, we've been helping them uh, get up to speed and make improvements as they move forward. And I think that they have um, made some progress, but we'll continue to need to make additional improvements. What happened? This is one of New Jersey's premier hospitals. It's one of the biggest in many of the uh, national rankings. It's considered one of the best. What went wrong? Well, I think it speaks to our ongoing uh, need to monitor quality in all of our health care facilities. We shouldn't take it for granted. Um, and the Department of Health and Senior Services has a number of programs that we utilize to maintain our oversight over the quality of our health care institutions. Um, the one I spoke about are quality inspections and investigations and uh, working directly with those institutions is what we've done already at, at Hackensack. But we also have a number of report cards where we report publicly on a number of different quality indicators so that both providers can see where they need to improve, but consumers also have a tool on how to choose a high quality provider. There's been so much talk, and last time you were here we discussed the, the hospital mergers, the buyouts, and in many of these cases, and Hackensack is an insta instant, uh, instance here, where they are collaborating with for-profit corporations to buy up other hospitals, mm -hmm. be it Pascag Valley, Mountainside, I believe is the other one in Hackensack's case as well. Are you worried at all that the collaboration between what had been community hospitals and proprietary institutions might in fact be impacting the quality of health care? To date, we have not seen any of the hospitals that have converted to for-profit ownership have any change in quality. We continue to monitor all of our hospitals in the state of New Jersey, whether they're for-profit or not-for-profit, on quality um, metrics as well as financial indicators to make sure that their uh, quality of care is up to speed as well as their financial health. And I think that um, it, it's irrelevant, their profit status, it's their mission and their uh, dedication to quality care and uh, providing access to the community that's the most important. You've testified uh, recently on health care reform and the impact this could have on the state uh, and the need to have a new, uh, I guess, reimbursement formula for some of the uh, aspects of, of Medicare uh, coverage, Medicaid coverage coming into the state. Uh, is New Jersey on the verge of losing money because of these reforms? So we have a number of different ways that we provide subsidies for the uninsured or underinsured in the state of New Jersey. In fact, uh, Governor Christie's proposed budget has almost a billion dollars worth of subsidies to hospitals to help with that charity care population. Um, we have made a number of reforms to our charity care formula that we believe make it more equitable so that if hospitals are providing more care to the uninsured, they're going to get an increase in their subsidy. And if they've had a decrease in the amount of care they provide to the uninsured, they'll have a decrease in their subsidy. Is there enough money in the pool to go around though, and, and from what the federal government contributes, will there be enough coming in? Well, one of the changes that we have seen is that the federal government will no longer uh, match our state dollars in the same way that they have in the past because of some reforms that we've made here in New Jersey. And so what we're going to do and have already proposed to, to CMS to do is to reform some of those funding pools so that we can maintain those federal matching dollars. Medical marijuana, you were quoted this week as saying we want to make sure that it's safely and securely available to patients as quickly as possible. The governor's had some, some questions about, I guess, the law and the way these programs are supposed to be implemented. How quickly do you think it could be safely made available? Well, I think the governor has been quite clear that he is moving forward uh, along with our agency in moving forward in, in implementing this program. And, and this week we did announce the first permit to an ATC here in New Jersey to begin uh, growing marijuana. And we hope that they will take that seriously and move forward to grow in their facility. Um, they inform us that it'll take about three to four months until the product is available. And we also made available publicly on our website the, name, uh, the names of over 100 physicians in the state of New Jersey throughout the state that have already voluntarily registered to be part of the program. Do you have any doubts, either publicly expressed or secretly held, that this program can do what it's supposed to do without a major problem 
of it being misused for recreational reasons. We are doing everything we can to ensure that this program will be run with in, uh, integrity throughout the state of New Jersey. We're doing a number of different things to make sure that happens. We are doing appropriate and thorough background checks on all of the owners and operators of these organizations. We're ensuring that they have appropriate security uh, measures in place and that they have in in inventory control systems um, before that they begin growing and then dispensing the product. They have to pass inspections inspections. They have to ensure to us that they've done thorough reviews of their employees and we will be auditing, monitoring them through both uh, on-site inspections as well as video surveillance so that we will be on top of what's going on here because we believe that it's so important. We're building a, a system from the ground up. There are no similar programs like this across the country. We do not want to see in New Jersey what has occurred in other states which has come under the scrutiny of the federal government and we've seen raids of those types of facilities. So in New Jersey... So this is a concern that you do have and that you continue to have? Well we have a concern that we don't want to look like those other states and that's why we've made all of the rules um, in our program to ensure that that does not happen. Commissioner O'Dowd, we have to leave it there. Thanks so much for coming in again. Absolutely.